Hello and welcome to this attempt of making a video tutorial about the texturing process for the Westlander helmet. I divided this tutorial into four chapters where I will talk about different aspects in uh, every different chapter. So starting with chapter one, uh, this will be focused on the preparation work. So we're talking about UV preparation, the mesh map baking, the shaders and the channel and how to unhide or hide the geometry even if Substance Painters doesn't allow you to. So let's get going. So here we are in Substance Painter version 2019 which comes with a quite a few interesting features uh, mainly the displacement which is really really cool and a few other things like filters like the blur slope or the uh, peeling paint, uh, a lot of other textures um, and procedurals, plenty of those, very cool stuff. Uh, but mainly what I'm going to do is going to be compatible with any version of Substance Painter. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is how do I import my model. So I import my model with a smooth baked in, which is um, adding a lot of extra loops but is helping me to notice if there is some distortions in the UVs um, that is going to show up when I'm texturing so if there is a problem I can fix it right here try to paint it or try to do some cheats to make it work the other thing I want to talk about is how the texture sets are structured. So this guy comes with six texture sets, or so six UDIMs, and uh, the UVs has been, have been splitted by area and by material. So, for example, if I am going to press F1 and I'm going to show you the UV space and the 3D space at the same time, you can see that the UDIM number one comes with a bit of a mask, a bit of the straps, if I press Alt Q, I can isolate that UDIM. So straps and mask. UDIM number two is other bits of the mask. The leather bit in the front, the eye, the filter is entirely here. A few other bits that I couldn't fit anywhere else. All the wires and uh, the uh, main hose are in here. 1003, 1004 is the helmet plus a few extra bits. All the details of the helmet, such as the straps, the fabric, etc., etc., are in, all in one UDIM. And then, last but not least, all the details of the helmet, such as the bolts and uh, the plugs, etc., are in one UDIM, plus all the um, glass. A very important thing to keep in mind when you're working on the uh, UVs is to especially in painter is to keep the resolution consistent mask this style so if the resolution of your model is not consistent these styleables will look in different ways or too big or too small according to the scale of your uvs and also it's very important to keep the uv scale consistent because when you move your camera towards a certain bit or a certain angle of your asset when you're making a render you don't want to have different type of resolution and different type of details uh, in certain bits compared to the other so I pretty much put a dialable of a UV check on top of my whole model so you can see that uh, everywhere is consist consistent apart from a couple of bits like the head because I knew that it was going to be black and I didn't care about it or the glasses of the eyes because I wanted to put some more details in there but apart from there it is pretty much everywhere consistent so apart from consistency another very important part is to create the UVs in a logical and nice way creating the UVs in a logical, logical and nice way will help your weight in texturing so much that is worth spending more time on it so for example uh, if i pick the hose in the front and i isolate it 
you can see that the hose is straight because I knew that I was going to apply a tileable based on UV space on this so it had to be straight so the fabric was going to look nice same thing for the wire in here which had some pattern in it if it's not straight it will not the pattern will not will not look correct another uh, thing that I did for example is the helmet the helmet I knew that it was going to be very complex because I had was going to put uh, the, the rust the dirt the scratches etc so I wanted it to be a single piece and to be as flat as possible and undistorted as possible so I couldn't figure out a better way than to cut the air areas and to make some sort of like a planner here so it is it is distorted a little but the the cut the, the trick here was to add a cut in here which is of course <laughs> it's hidden behind the other piece of geo so the distortion is is minimal and I have everything in one single UV shell and I when I'm gonna paint dirt and paint things I will try to reduce the amount of issues and seams to the minimal um, other important parts for example is this part of the leather here the leather here I couldn't keep this loop together without having a lot of distortion so I knew that it was going to be tricky but I tried to hide the other bits for example this one here which is pretty big at the bottom so when you do have the whole model usually it's covered by the hose so in terms of UVs my my best hint is to really spend some time organize them think about what kind of material is going to go there what kind of detail you're going to put in there before you start actually painting textures the next thing i want to talk about is the mesh maps so substance painter does a fantastic job in terms of baking mesh maps and this has been an amazing way of improving procedural texturing uh, there are a couple of things uh, that I want to talk about there's really nothing nothing much to say about it one very important thing I want to talk about is the ambient occlusion the ambient occlusion if I am isolating 1004 the ambient occlusion uh, in the default settings come with a setting that says ignore back face if you ignore back face all the single-sided mesh or all the mesh to meshes that are compenetrating other meshes will leave uh, some sort of an artifact I'll show it to you uh, very quickly so if I bake only this map here so if I bake them up with the um, ignore back face activated you can see that certain bits are it comes with some artifacts so if instead I bake it without so I don't ignore back face and apply to the whole texture sets I will have properly baked let's say properly baked map that will produce no artifacts whatsoever is a little bit more expensive in terms of calculation but who cares it's a few more minutes and uh, I'm gonna use this map without artifacts I will need this map with artifacts in uh, the next chapters to be able to create the rust uh, the holes and the dirt etc etc on the helmet so this was very important another little trick that I want to talk about is the position map so if I am if I'm showing the uh, position map I can either search it for here search it for it here at this moment this map is baked using a custom setting which is here normalization scale so 
normally what you have is by material. So if I apply to all and I bake it, the position is based only on a single texture set, but not on an entire object, which means that if I want to apply a filter or a map or a mask or something that is taking in consideration the whole asset, I can't do it. So instead, if I am going back here and I apply to the full scene and I back it again, now the scale of my position is taking in consideration the full objects, full object. Uh, I didn't end up using the position in this specific asset, but if you have a vehicle uh, or a weapon and you want to have some dust coming in certain parts, like uh, for example nearby the wheels, or uh, if you have a, a burn mark that you want to have it only in the front of your weapon, uh, it is important that if your weapon is splitted into multiple items, that you have the position baked like this. Okay, so now that we have our model in the scene and our uh, mesh maps baked, we can roll back to our material, press M. We are rolled back to our material. So the next thing I want to talk about is the channels. So Substance Painter comes with a series of predetermined channels based on the type of template that you set up when you start your project. In this case I have the classic ones for a PBR setup, which means that I have roughness and metallic. For this project I need few more channels which are very easy to add, so you just click on here and you add the channels that you want. In this case I want a displacement and I want a ambient occlusion which I'm gonna come back later to talk about in the following chapters. I want this uh, channels in every texture set. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately Substance Painter doesn't allow you to create these channels in every texture set at the same time unless you create your own template uh, which I'm not gonna demonstrate in this video but otherwise you have to go to every uh, texture set, luckily there are only six, and add it to every every one of them. The little difference here is is for the texture set number 1006. If I am isolating again, so this one here has the glass and also comes with the lamp of the torchlight, okay, which is hidden inside here. So I need two more things for this texture set. I put the glass and the torchlight in the same unit for one purpose, for commodity. So I can put the classic displays and lamp occlusion, which I have in all the other uh, texture set. But in this case, I also want an opacity and an emissive. If you spread your glass and you spread your emissive materials all all over the place across the texture set, that's a little bit more confusing. But in this case, they are here, I know, and uh, when I want to uh, work on this, I only have to come to one texture set. Um, the reason I added the displacement as a, a specific channel is because in the shader, um, you can, when you're gonna uh, uh, enable the displacement, you can also say that the displacement will be based on the height. So everything you put in the height will be uh, used in the displacement as well. But uh, I think that this doesn't give you all the control you want. I'd rather have the chance to decide whatever uh, something that I do in the height goes into the displacement as well. So I prefer to keep them separate. Um, so if you go in your shader setting and you um, use as a source channel your displacement, you can decide um, if something that you put in the height goes into the displacement as well. Another interesting feature of um, Substance Painter is the ability to change shaders uh, per texture set, which means that in 
every texture set you do have something called main shader. But what if I want to work on the opacity and I want to see how opaque my geometry is? Well, I can create a new shader. So if I go here and I create a new shader instance, I come with something called main shader copy. If I go into the shader settings and I'm editing the main shader copy and I, for example, rename it to uh, main shader opacity, I can go here and change from the PBR method roughness, which is the standard one, into something that comes with alpha blending. So if I put it here, then, well, let me dis disable the displacement, then I do have a shader in here that is different from the other ones, and it comes with their own properties. So if I edit my opacity, I can actually see it rather than just having a black and white mask in there. And this comes very, very handy uh, for another purpose that is not the classic one of having a transparent part of the geometry, but it's because Substance Painter unfortunately doesn't allow you to hide uh, parts of the geometry within the same texture set. You can hide texture sets, but for example, what if I want to hide certain parts of the geometry because I want to see it, I want to see what's underneath it, or for having a little bit of clear scene. Well, what I can do is hide and unhide using the transparency. So if I'm going to assign the opacity to my shader number one, and in my layers, I'm going to create a new fill. And in my fill, I'm going to alt click on the opacity. So there will be only contribution of this layer in the opacity channel. Then I will create a black mask. So this, ma this channel is actually uh, completely masked out my opacity has to be completely transparent. And in my mask, I can start selecting, if I am going, for example, in here, and I select, for example, the head, or for example, the straps, I can hide and unhide the things. So in this case, this is my mask, and now this is my material. So, of course, it's a trick, it's a horrible trick, but it works if you need to hide something. Uh, the problem is that you are not actually hiding it, you are making it transparent. So it works only in the material, it doesn't work if I'm cycling through the different maps, so base color or mask, etc. It's all there. It works only in the in the material, but it's a good trick if you need to check what's underneath the geo or if you want to keep it stuff clean. I usually have this in every UDIM and then I delete it uh, towards the end of the project when I don't really need it anymore, so I can call it like a o a o o opacity mask. Mask, and I can give it a specific color uh, so I know I can recognize it very easily. I will use this trick of the color to uh, diversify different type of layers a lot in the future. So it's a very, for me, it's a very handy feature uh, to keep the things clear. When I will have like a 20, 30, 40 layers per channel, uh, it will be easy to spot what is what. And of course, uh, if I don't want this anymore, I can just unhide it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that that this type of shader with the opacity is much more expensive to render than the normal one. So it might become a little bit, uh, the refresh rate might go a little bit down, especially if you have it on 30 uh, texture sets. So use it, but use it with a little bit of uh, self-control. So now that you have 
the ability to hide and unhide Geo, you set up your shaders, you got your mesh maps, and uh, you have everything in place, we can start discussing about painting actual textures in this and how to structure proper texturing process. So see you in chapter two.